kind of throw away the schedule a bit to do other learning. Like when the Mars rover was landing, we just tossed out the schedule and we invested in looking into what Perseverance was and just the challenges they faced with it. And in doing that, I learned so much about the students. Like some of them are super fans of Mark Rover and Chris Hadfield, and I never knew that about the students. Welcome to Edwin Teacher Talk, where we shine the light on our Edwin teachers. I'm Jody Denny. I'm a classroom success facilitator with Edwin, and my role is to support new Edwin teachers and students in using our platform. Uh, on our talk today, we have Madison Siemens, who is an educator from Manitoba, and she's here to share her personal story about being a new Edwin teacher and what that journey has looked like. Um, so Madison, would you please introduce yourself? I'm Madison Siemens. I'm working with the Winnipeg School Division. I'm working with the virtual school and currently I'm teaching grade sevens. Um, thank you so much for being here. We also have my partner in crime, Sherry Ross, who is a, a regional team lead in Alberta and a classroom success uh, facilitator. Sherry, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Sherry Ross. Like Jody said, I'm a regional team lead in Western Canada. I'm a junior high math science teacher, self-proclaimed geek, love collecting rocks, have cats, and I'm here to talk about teaching stuff. That was an amazing intro. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> um, so pressure's on you now, focus is on you. What first drew you back in your journey uh, to teaching and what inspired you to want to be an educator? Um, so I was already in university when I decided I wanted to pursue teaching. I tutored math a lot as a side job. And one day I was tutoring a couple of girls and the topic was very challenging for the one of them especially. And we, I went through every trick I knew. We did everything. And finally she had the aha, I got it moment. And she, her response was she just looked at me and she's like, oh, why can't you be my math teacher? And I was like, you know what? Why can't I be your math teacher? So I, after I finished my math degree, I went on to pursue education and here we are. That's amazing. I love that story. Um, what, so since you've gotten your education um, degree, what has like kept you motivated? Like what something that happens on the daily or weekly, what keeps you inspired and what keeps you going? It's, Still those aha moments, but it's also for me the days that we get to just like kind of throw away the schedule a bit to do other learning. Like when the Mars rover was landing, we just the, we tossed out the schedule and we invested in looking into what Perseverance was and just the challenges they faced with it. And in doing that, I learned so much about the students. Like. Some of them are super fans of Mark Rover and Chris Hadfield, and I never knew that about the students. And then some of them stayed on after for about half an hour to watch it land with me and it extended past class time. Those moments where it's like where we can just throw it out and do more learning, different learning. That's what's exciting for me. Yeah, and I think it, throwing out the schedule and throwing out what you had planned is one thing, but and what you did do was actually giving that experiential learning, right? So they were really learning, but in a different way. Like it was a real world example. It was something they could relate to. Um, it was experiential. And I think that, yeah, that's that's something even in parenting actually that I forget sometimes. Like, you know, like I'm always about like the to-dos and the chores, but sometimes I'm like, you know what? Let's just sit back for a second and let's experience something together. And those are the moments that, you know, you find the rich conversations and the bonding. So. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> so when you consider how teaching looked when you first stepped into the classroom compared to what it looks like today, um, what would you go back and tell Fresh Faced Madison uh, to do for what lies ahead? So um, Sherry came up with three cues for you here. Uh, would you take a specific course to help you prepare for what this looks like right now? Uh, learn another skill or perhaps switch professions. <laughs> or option D that I didn't think of. Those are just some ideas. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually not only new to Edwin, but new to teaching. I graduated in December. Oh, and I've only been teaching since January. 
So fresh face Madison is this face Madison. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so I think what I would tell myself is maybe just remind myself to take grace when I need to. You know, we're always told give the students grace, like especially in the pandemic, like give them some grace, but I need to know that I need to give myself some grace too. And water is as important as coffee. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess that'd be the advice for myself right now. <laughs> wow, so I did not know that you were, so you entered the teaching world during a pandemic. Yeah. And you, your first experience is a virtual experience. It is, yeah. So yeah. when you went to teacher's college, how did they, like, so you graduated before the pandemic or it, this was also during? Also during. My internships were during the pandemic. My first internship, like the pre-internship, that was when the pandemic hit. And my sixth day of pre-internship was telling the kids to go home. We're not sure when this will be over. Wow, Madison. Wow. What a, wow. I, you're my first teacher that I've spoken with that's actually had that type of experience. That's amazing. So how do you think that kind of like you, you kind of came into it when it was during the storm, right? So how did you stay um, grounded in like your teaching practices and everything that you learned to teach you uh, like from your practicums? Like how did that relate to this new teaching world like this did, this does not look like what they taught me in teachers college this is completely different what are you telling me right now <laughs> yeah i think in some ways it was easier for me to come in because this is all i know it's not right. like i'm comparing it to things i've built up it's not like i'm comparing it to um resources that i have on my shelf it's uh this is all i know so it's, it is what it is. And I think it's easier for me in that way. Um, but very similarly with teacher college, like they prepared us the best they could, but it, it got dumped on them too. Right. So mm. there were ways they taught us to make relationships. They're so different now in teaching virtual students who <laughs> I've never met before and all that stuff's so different, but it's all I know. So I guess it's easier. Yeah, that's true. There's no comparison, right? Right. There's no yeah. pining after the good old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So fresh face Madison is this fresh face right here. Uh, so how has um, Edwin been able to help in this remote teaching environment for you and your students and your lesson planning? Um, what does that look like and what, how, how has it helped you? I found that like the resource bank of Edwin is just phenomenal. Like I haven't explored a fraction of it yet. Like it's so deep, so much of it. And like with the resources fluidly connecting to Google Classroom, I found that um, I was able to like during the pandemic with the students, their, their knowledge is so spread out. Like from one student to the other to the other, it's so different. Like there's no comparing them to their peers or where they were at before even, because the kids call it COVID brain, what they forgot, they're not sure about. And so I found like differentiation with Edwin was easy because with the students who are struggling or at maybe a lower level, I may be able to um, like able to show them more resources to support them or edit out some things that maybe they're not ready for. And then on the other end of that, the students at the upper level, I'm able to just let them explore things they're interested in, but also um, guide them with that. Like, oh, have you seen this video on Edwind? Um, and kind of push them in that direction if they're already understanding what we're currently covering in class. So, so thank you. When, when you say differentiate, do you ever use, so you're grade seven, and you have access to like all the grades in your teacher library. Do you ever pull content from a lower grade to support um, students who maybe need the extra support? Yeah, I do. I, I don't tell them, oh, I'm currently pulling from grade five or six, or I'm pulling from grade eight or nine. Um, I don't tell them that. I'm just like, here's the resource you are working on today. 
Yeah, I love that about Edwin that when, so as a teacher, when you share the content with your student, when they open it up, they don't, as a grade seven student, they won't see, oh, my teacher just assigned me a grade five learning object. They don't see that. And that's nice because you don't want the student to feel, you know, that you're giving them um, something that is not at their age level. However, you are giving them something that they will experience success with and then, you know, build their confidence. So it's a great um, feature of Edwin that as teachers, we can do that. Now, Sherry was talking about retail therapy as we were preparing for this uh, talk today. And I got to think like, yes, online shopping um, (laughs) has been my lifesaver. But I I was thinking about something. My, My daughters forced something upon me the other day. Um, they made me do something that I would never ordinarily do, and I didn't really want to, but I sort of just gave in. And I have to say, it has been the light of my week. Um, <laughs> I got these green nails. <laughs> something I would never do. Like this is just not me. But it's funny because as I'm working, I'm like writing, and I look down, and I'm like, you know what? How can I seriously take myself too seriously by looking at these green nails, right? So they just sort of been like something funny that I can laugh at during the day, something that is, you know, something I didn't know I needed. Uh, Now we're gonna relate that to Edwin. What in Edwin, in terms of like a feature or functionality or tool of medicine is something that you can't live without, something that you need that you didn't know that you needed? For me, it's the math tool section just off to the side with the, okay, I'll show you. I use this cookie sheet and I have like, right now it's messy because it's like circle pieces and integer tiles. And I use this constantly where (laughs) I'm like trying to hold it to the camera, but like not block my face and it's a mess. (laughs) But the math tools, when I found that, like I can just share my screen, show them the integer tiles there. And then instead of on Google slides, making little yellow and red circles, they can just go to Edwin and use the yellow and red circles. It's so much easier for me. I That's love crazy. that you have that cookie sheet right there. Is <laughs> That's that magnetic? Okay. What an Is magnetic way to Mag- adapt. Like, I think that was fantastic. Yeah, it's magnetic. And I was trying to like, the whiteboard behind me is not. So I like put it up. I'm like, yeah, I can stick them on there and they don't stick. And I was like, well, <laughs> uh, good thing with virtual. I'm close to my kitchen. I just grabbed the cookie sheet. <laughs> I'm just so happy that you uh, that you agreed to join us today and, and to share your experience because I think it's an important, it's yours is an important story for people to hear.